Um, I don't know when I got into photography, I don't think. I know when I got my first camera, because I can remember it was a cliche thing of I got it from my grandparents, my dad's mum and dad, and it was just like a little point and shoot thing. I remember going wild with it. I don't think I really understood what I was doing with it, but I was just like, ah, I just wanted to get everything. Um, but then, I don't know, recently I thought about it because my, when my sister got married a few years ago, in my dad's like speech, he mentioned about my photography and he said that I'd always been doing it. And like he, he mentioned the fact that he would always remember me like on long car journeys home. Like my sister would fall asleep and she'd always fall asleep like with her head back like wide open. And I was, I always just think it was funny to take pictures of her like doing stuff like that and just like just stupid little moments. So I suppose if you think it in that respect, then I suppose I've done photography for as long as I can remember. Right, so at the moment we are in my studio, which is in part of the graduate studio in Northumbria, right in the city centre of Newcastle. So where we are now is literally opposite the civic centre, right in the centre of Newcastle. So it was, for me, this was an obvious choice. There's a few studios in Newcastle that I looked at, but this just seemed um, already associated with the people in the place and know all the people locally. So see about the next step. So here now I've been using this for uh, six months in the studio. Uh, been using it to, using a lot of wall space to kind of, obviously I'm quite a prolific photographer, that's like the, 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 just due to the nature of my work. So using the wall space and stuff and having this availability just allows me to kind of evaluate what I've been doing, I suppose, as well. Um, so it's a good way of kind of encompassing all my ideas and then getting kind of my head around them, seeing what else is happening, we'll see what's working, we'll just see what I'm working with as well, and sometimes if I've done a lot of new stuff as well, some, sometimes it's just nice to get some prints done of it and start putting it together as well, or with a show as well, just putting shows together on my wall. Uh, most recent one was, oh, what was the most recent one? It was the one at the Star and Shadow in Newcastle, that was the one where I did the Her House, and that was with Louise, Todd, Chloe Mercer and Gemma Hind. Uh, and that was a really good show. We had loads and loads and loads of people turn up to it as well, which is completely unpredictable. I mean, we had, uh, well, I think it was just under 100 beers or something, and they were gone within like half an hour. So, yeah, it was super. Um, that led on as well from, there's been all sorts going on. I uh, had some work in Nottingham in the Surface Gallery there for their international postcard show in January. Uh, I also had my solo show at Gateshead Old Town Hall, which was great. So, big up David Guy for sorting that one out. Um, and that's still up as well now. Uh, there's some more exciting stuff happening in the summer, I can't tell too much at the minute, but uh, there's some yeah. exciting projects that I'm doing with a few people. Uh, doing, uh, looking at doing some work with uh, David Bilber as well from Unit 44. Uh, we both think, I think we both think very similar about photography and analogue photography, we're both quite traditional about it and he shoots a lot of his stuff on film as well. And we've just got a similar kind of thought process and a similar way of reacting to things I think, so I'm going to do some work with him later in the year, but watch this space on that one. Super, right, what gear do I use? I use a Leica uh, M6 TTL with the 0.58 rangefinder because I've got no eyesight so I can see the frame lines. But um, yeah, I, uh, I, was, I started using like, because um, I, I was drawn to the black and white straight away. Obviously I want to use film because I've, like, I've always been a bit of a film geek anyway, I think. I enjoy the process of it and the kind of the craftsmanship of it and the chemistry of it, all of it. So I started shooting in black and white anyway, and like I said, I didn't get on with it. So I started shooting in colour, but it's just a completely different ball game. Like, that's, well, I wrote a dissertation on it, but like, I started using colour and it's completely different, but again, it just sued me. Um, so I was shooting it with the Leica, any, I was shooting it with other cameras anyway. And then I noticed that a lot of people were using these Leicas and, uh, they seem to. I, I, I didn't really understand, stood why, I didn't understand why or anything, but again, I was drawn to it and I'd been, I knew about Lycus anyway because, again, it's handcrafted, like hand put together. It's just it's German perfection. I suppose it's German engineering as well, BMW as well. Just, yeah, my parents have had German cars as well, and I think it's, 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 you're drawn to it straight away as well, aren't you? The quality of it. And again, that's what you want. And if you're going to document reality, you want something that's going to document it in probably the most optically perfect and most realistic way in it to reproduce it so I looked at like this obviously and I do a little bit of saving and that obviously I think most people do um, and I what did I get first I know my first one actually was an M3 because obviously I was big on Lee Freelander and my parents blessed them obviously listened to me rambling on 
constant crap and uh, they knew my dad's a bit of a camera geek as well and he obviously knew about the M3 and spoke to a friend who was a manager of a camera store as well and she sent set my dad someone else and they ended up going to Ford's in Inverness and got an M3 uh, the single stroke M3 for us for my 21st birthday so it was quite like a, a big occasion I suppose um, it was a complete surprise and absolutely went bananas for it and obviously the, the frame lines in the M3 are completely different to uh, this one so I was using 50 mil straight away, so like, uh, which I was used to anyway. Um, and I did, I just fell in love with it, like absolutely everything from the sound of it to using it. Uh, kind of the history of it, the romantic side of using it, the fact that it was film, like everything together just came together and it was like, it, it, I, don't, I don't want to seem like a idiot or whatever, but you do, I think some people just fall in love with something. I think it's probably just the fact that I'm really interested in the mechanics of it anyway as well and the optical glass and just it's gorgeous i love it Fuzz in. so i think in, in this next year fingers crossed touch wood and everything uh definitely want to get back to amsterdam um i met up with uh, laser one three one four uh, a few months ago when he came to newcastle to paint and that was amazing such like such a sound guy uh, so i'd like to go and see him again if i go to amsterdam and then if i can get to the states as well i'll be going to the states as well in the next year uh, I suppose, cliched, I'd love to do a road trip, um, but I've got friends as well that are in the States, so it'd be nice to dot off around here, there, and see them. But I've got, like I say, I'm really interested in the South America uh, and the West Coast as well, so yeah, I'll get away soon, I think. I've got a lot of projects that I want to get on with, uh, just in case find the fun and get in the time to go out and get it done, yeah, it should be good, really looking forward to it.